Alrighty, generic greetings fellow citizens of the internet, this is of course Richard and today I bring you another episode on the Omni Slab server. Uh, as you can see, I am in the general witch farm district. Uh, as you can see, we've got the cow pen, which is filling up, the sheep pen, which is still empty, uh, and that kind of thing. It looks like we've got a bunch more sugarcane around, but what I want to show you is this. Uh, yes. <laughs> It is the perhaps laughably unnecessary and silly villager breeder, now with villagers. For some time it did not have villagers, but uh, as of now, partially thanks to Dino, it does. The village has been moved from over there to in here, uh, which is very nice. Uh, so basically, uh, this is sort of my own design, which is a tweaking of 50,000 other designs or general concepts or whatever that have sort of come together in my mind to form this amalgamation of whatever it is. Um, but at least two villagers here. There are, I think one of them is in a minecart still and the other one isn't. Uh, eventually I'll want at least two villagers in minecarts there uh, because the way we'll be getting them out is by popping minecarts in like along there. Uh, with a, there's a dispenser there that will be able to pop out minecarts on the click of this button. Um, I'm not going to do it because the we only have two villagers in there right now. But, um, so two villagers in there uh, will breed, and they will breed because way the heck up top, if you can see up there, there are six doors, um, and in between the two, let me see if I can get up there to give you guys a better idea of what we're looking at, uh, because, let's see, use the, use the, um, conveniently placed... Uh, staircase here, rail staircase. Uh, so we've got this sort of thing going on. Let me just quickly break this and pull her up to give you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, so we've got a villager up here on a rail, a uh, powered rail that will be powered by this circuit over here, uh, when we want to toggle the system on or off. So this villager up here is activating these doors. He is making these doors be a valid village. Um, and those villagers down there are far enough away that I, I don't exactly even understand how it works, but they're not part of the village, but they are. So they're breeding, but they never reach the cap. Um, and the village never recognizes those villagers, but they still keep breeding, basically. Um, so we'll get theoretically infinite villagers as long as this is a valid village. And it, the only reason why it's a valid village is because this guy is here, which uh, is where the minecart comes in. Huh, so to turn off the village, we just need to get him down from there, which is what this big long rail line is about. We bring him all the way down to the bottom there, and he will no longer be validating this village, and very quickly the thing will turn off. Well, not very quickly, it's taken, you know, even a couple minutes, I think, sometimes in the past. I don't know why, but it does seem to be kind of delay sometimes. Uh, but it does work, and it does at least eventually turn off. Um... Hopefully, uh, and we won't get flooded with thousands and thousands and thousands of villagers. Um, and while I'm up here, I may as well go over how the redstone of this thing works. Uh, this is a vertical piston signal transmission sort of thing. Um, lots and lots of blocks between the pistons, but uh, one tick pulse pushes uh, the bottom set of blocks upwards, which pushes a redstone block against that piston, which pushes a redstone block against that piston, ah. piston blah, 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 which pushes all those original ones back down again. Ah. Um, and that also pushes these up, which activates this. Repeater ah. into dust, into piston, pushes everything back down again, and into this block, ah. into the um, activator rail, or um, powered rail also sends this guy on his way. And this repeater is on four ticks delay to give this enough of a signal length in order to actually get him down so it doesn't just sort of flash on, flash off, and leave him still stranded. Um, so that's the general idea behind that. I'll sort of go down there and show off a little bit more of that while I'm down, but... Uh, as you can see, this thing is zombie-proof. He will be able to pass through, uh, down and up through this block here. Uh, at least I believe so. I haven't tested it here in this configuration, but elsewhere in Creative I have tested it, so it should be okay. Um, or at least I've, I've tested the general concept. Uh, 
uh, so fingers crossed. Um, then, yeah, down here, dispenser with button to uh, grab these villagers out. The villagers that are not in minecarts uh, will be able to get into minecarts and leave. Um, and villagers that are in minecarts, obviously there will be two of them, and they will be staying in there. Uh, but they are on um, an iron pressure plate, like right behind this crafting bench there is a block with an iron pressure plate on it and that gives out a signal strength based on how many entities are on top of it so uh, for example right now there are only three uh, two villagers and a minecart so it's giving out a signal strength of just one that's what iron pressure plates do it takes a lot more entities to get it to notch up another signal basically um, and by the time it gets to here it will be roughly 40 entities in there so around 40 villagers and this will get to this point and trip this to actually turn the system off uh, so once this gets up to 40 villagers it'll turn itself off automatically um, and basically firstly there's this uh, indicator light let me bust in here and show, you, show off some of the redstone behind it um, firstly there's a torch on this side of this block right here um, which you could sort of see above, let me just, yeah, it's right there. Redstone dust on that block, um, with a torch on the side. Sh shuts off, the torch shuts off when the signal gets all the way to here, uh, which shuts off the lamp. Um, and the signals that the system is turning off. Uh, then, let me bust out just a bit more. So the redstone dust is pointing into this block here, which uh, then triggers the next bit of the circuit. Oop, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> breaking things, breaking things. So um, into a repeater, which drags it through this block, um, and into quick monostable circuit. That's a piston facing up uh, with obviously an air block above. So when the signal goes in, it'll poop up. It'll, it'll, it'll not poop, it'll boop. I just meant to say boop. Um, it'll boop up, uh, which is slightly less, you know, 12 year oldy. Um, and power this redstone, but only for the brief moment when signal can pass through before the block gets extended, uh, which is what a monostable does, and it's what it, what it, is meant to do and what it does here, so it's very good. And that will reduce this down to exactly one tick of a pulse, um, and so then I will send that uh, again through a block, uh, through the repeater. I need to eat. I'm always forgetting to eat. It's kind of bad. Um, but so, whilst I shout over my eating, um, goes through another repeater and into this piston here. This piston is directly underneath the, um, big long chain of um, fences, then redstone block, then fences up to that piston there. Uh, it's all right underneath there, so when I, uh, when this thing is full, um, it'll send a pulse up there and send the villager all his way down. Uh, then right up here, actually I can, you know, I'll, I'll just break it. Um, Right here is a torch directly on top of this block, so when it gets full, again, it'll deactivate this torch, and boop doop 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 um, It will no longer power this uh, rail here. So that activated there, that, that powered rail will get temporarily turned on to send the villager down, and this rail won't send him back up again. But the second this is turned back on again, uh, that, that is when enough villagers are pulled out that uh, the line is no longer powered. Uh, this will turn back on again and send him right on back up. And if at any time he, you know, for whatever reason ends up coming down um, at when this thing is still supposed to be, you know, active, he'll just get sent right back up again. Uh, so that shouldn't be any kind of issue. Uh, and right on top of here I had flowers and things things. Did I pick up the pot? I picked up the pot. Uh, oh, and this is something that I was dealing with earlier. The I did only have one flower in there, 
Um, but there is a bug currently where these things are duplicated. These two are are horrible, duplicated, not real flowers. They they are fake and they they shouldn't exist. Um, so make of that what you will. I might name them just for novelty's sake or something later uh, when I have the resources. But so let's see, close this off again, and then close that off. What did I have? I had a redstone lamp there. That uh, should be more or less all set. It is now nighttime, and fingers crossed, it should be mob proof. Uh, I haven't quite finished working out the kinks here. I think that tiny zombies might be able to punch them through these corner blocks. So I'm just trying to figure out ways to just completely keep them from being able to get there. Um, and I think at this point, at least pathfinding should be completely bamboozled. Because they can't path through tracks, or at least not under normal circumstances. But I need to do some more testing uh, before I'm totally confident about that. Uh, and as you saw before, the top platform is spawn-proofed, or, er, um, well, it's spawn-proofed and it's, uh, set up so that zombies won't be able to just sort of walk up here. Although I don't think they would, given that they're tracks. But! Ha! Huh, anyway, so let's see, is there anything else that I need to talk about? Uh, well, statue zombie, um, lamp post zombie, that's always good. Uh, but then this line over here is going to go off to parts unknown, uh, if we have an iron golem farm that gets set up and so forth, there'll probably be at least a temporary line that'll go off in that general direction. Well, that's a good sign. You can't find a way into the villagers. Awesome. It's the villager, uh, not villager, the um, baby zombies that I'm really worried about, though. Eventually, I might set up some kind of system to sort of dissuade them and get them out of there so they're not just sort of hanging around being annoying. Because uh, that would get frustrating after a little while. But they should burn in the sunlight. Right, he's under the he's under the awning, right? I think he's, he's not, or rather, he's, he's not. He's Yeah, he should be out in the open sunlight. So he'll burn, he'll burn, it'll be fine. But yeah, I'm thinking uh, that this pathway will sort of come up and be become sort of an elevated rail. Uh, you've got the beginnings of that sort of aesthetic right around in here. And I'm thinking I'm going to turn down my game sounds just a little bit, because I feel like it is pretty loud. Um, certainly make a difference. Uh, we'll see. Um, but yes. Uh, and I apologize if that was, in fact, ear shattering before. But you've sort of got the beginnings of the aesthetic here, but I'm going to turn it into a proper elevated rail to come across here. Well, this part may still sort of be, like, embedded in the um, wall, but, like, higher up or something. I'll figure it out. And there will be sort of junctions going off in whatever different directions, uh, including off to over here. Uh, also, the dispenser is set up to be wired automatically so that... Uh, or, or wired in to be automatically triggered under certain circumstances. Say, for example, something like this needs to call for a villager. We'll be able to set it up to automatically deliver a villager, um, like switch the junction and then um, send a villager all the way out to here, uh, which is the trading hall, I do believe. i not sure what it looks like, um, and they said that they were working on it. Uh, so I really... I, w I didn't know what to expect, um, and I definitely had some preconceptions about how I wanted to build it, because um, I thought that I was going to be the one to build it. Hi! Hello, don't mind me. Is there a place somewhere I can hide? No, there isn't. I need to get myself a sword, and... The lag doesn't help, but it's okay, I won. Uh, so yeah. I didn't know what to expect, and I knew I knew what I sort of was going to build. Uh, this definitely wasn't it, but I definitely think that this does work, and it should be cool. Uh, so, obviously there's plenty that still needs to be done. It looks like tracks will go back here, I imagine. Uh, but it is well on its way, and it does definitely look cool on the inside. Uh, on the outside looks pretty neat as well. Um, kind of monochromatic with all the sandstone, but altogether pretty solid. Uh, so I look forward to seeing that in its full completion and tying it up in together and so forth like that. 
Also, if we have any other trading halls that we set up, like if I set up my own in my own base or whatever, uh, then we can set up rail lines and junctions to go in all kinds of different places as well. Um, assuming we don't set up separate breeders, um, I was sort of running on the assumption that we'd be using the one breeder for everything, given that uh, it would just slightly reduce lag and so forth. Uh, but that likely isn't too big of an issue. Oh yeah, and we'll, we're going to need to tear all this down, because that's now completely... it's not doing anything. Uh, but yeah, all depends on how we end up doing things, and I suppose, you know, like, it would add up over time if we had, like, bunches of breeders, but, like, 80 wouldn't be that much worse than 40. Well, it would, it kind of would be, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, but back here, as you recall, uh, there is this. And this, I think, is what I'm gonna do, um, this is what I'm gonna make the focus for this episode. Because uh, I have some devious plans as to what I want to do with this thing. Uh, and it should be really cool if it ends up turning out the way I am planning. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is clear out a whole bunch of land between, you know, here and the outside. Just basically open this up a bit uh, as much as I really can, at least for now. And one thing that I definitely do want to do... Um, is I want to get up, like, uh, an all-purpose mob grinder, uh, where I'll be able to select whether I want, um, skeletons, uh, or just, like, all mobs, uh, from a bigger, like, general mob system up above or something, uh, or both, and I'll be able to sort of have three levers, and at all times be able to do that, and probably switch it between, um, XP mode and uh, just mob, you know, drop grinding. Uh, so that'll be that'll be quite the challenge. Um, and I will be using uh, Chrono Hawk's new <laughs> S bend design, which I watched his video and I love it. I am definitely going to be wow lag spike. Um, I'm definitely going to be. I'm definitely going to be using it um, a whole lot, and I'm definitely going to be using it here, uh, because it's going to be very nice indeed. I should be doing something productive rather than just wandering back and forth and talking. Um, but it's difficult to work and talk. It's very difficult. Um, so yeah, I'm going to rip all this out, uh, and I'm going to grab all of this nice juicy mossy cobblestone, and then I'm going to get back with you, I guess, once I've got a bit more done. Uh, also, yeah, link to Chrono Hawk's stuff in the description, of course. Um, his design is, like, so straightforward that I am surprised I didn't think of it before or anything, but it's absolutely exactly what I would need for something like this. And it is perfect for um, all-purpose general mob systems. Uh, so the timing could not have been better for my purposes here. Uh, and I, it really kind of inspired me to get going on something like that, because I will be able to handle you know, anything that shows up. If witches are there, I'll be able to boop them and take care of them. And if there's skeletons, zombies, heck, even endermen, I might even be able to include spiders. Who knows? It depends on how I design it, though. Uh, I might have to get creative. But, uh, no, I probably won't be able to process Endermen or Spiders. Uh, but, theoretically, I could, maybe. Not practically, but theoretically, you know. Um, and then I'll have the separate system wired up for, you know, more XP grinding with the spawner. And maybe drop grinding. Like, the rare drops. Um... But yeah, I guess I'll give more details and exact setups and so forth once I've gotten a little bit further. Um, I'll start roughing it out by then. And... Oh yeah, and I wanted to have the storage room more or less on the same level as the booping zone. Uh, as well as I'm going to experiment with ways of getting XP from down below up to where... I am. So this, this will all make more sense once I've gotten a little bit further and I've actually started building and explained the S-Bend system a bit more and so forth. Uh, but I guess I will stop talking here and actually get to work. So see you guys in just a bit. 
So, I'm not totally sure what this is. There's a cow here. What? what? <laughs> this is almost spooky. It's like this secret sanctum or something. It's just like a little grotto. It's sort of completely protected from the weather. It's like where somebody's been... I don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I won't disturb it for now. Uh, well, actually, I guess I'm kind of gonna have to. It's on my land. It's on my land. <laughs> all right. All right. But I'll, I'll keep working here. Alrighty. Progress report. Um, here's the original cave. Uh, coming through basically like that. I'm sort of working my way this way. And. I'm basically just gonna cover over this, I think. I don't think it's of any significance, honestly. Uh, so hopefully that should be just fine, and if it is actually of some, you know, holy significance to someone, then they will have seen this video. I'm misplacing dirt all over the place, good gracious. Uh, they will have seen this video, hopefully, and will know what is going on there. Uh, so, yes indeed. Uh, that's pretty much where I'm at at this point. Uh, proceeding very nicely so far. Got a decent amount hollowed, but I do <laughs> do definitely want to get trading to get some better tools uh, rather than these crappy stone ones, because I don't quite feel justified in using iron yet. Because uh, we don't have the iron farm, and I definitely don't feel justified using diamond because we don't have the diamond trades going. Uh, Soon enough, soon enough. I'll get back to it, I'll be right back. Alright, so I've gotten quite a bit hollowed out here. Uh, it's looking quite nice indeed. Uh, I actually, I was not I was thinking about how I wanted to shape this area, um, and I actually ended up hitting this cave uh, over here, and I think that'll actually work out quite nicely because this kind of does follow the kind of contour that I'd probably want to have it take. Uh, so that should actually be pretty cool. So I'm probably going to finish up hollowing all this out, raise the ceiling a bit, uh, and that'll also give me this to work with, uh, and, you know, all the caves. The, that actually connects up down there to a bunch of other caves and whole cave system and access down to the mine shaft and all kinds of other nice things. Uh, so I will probably finish up cutting away this wall. Oh, and I was also... Um, thinking about filling this in just a bit so that there was a better walkway out here because uh, it's kind of annoying having to sort of walk the edge or swim uh, but I'll figure that out maybe I'll make a pathway system over this water because I don't really want to totally take it out but at the same time uh, it is definitely really annoying to swim all over the place uh, so maybe like slab pathways or something I'll figure it out uh, I'll bring you back when I've got more uh, right now I'm going to get back to this, so, in a bit. Okay, so I've gotten some work done. Uh, as you can see, I've hauled out quite a bit more of the area here. Uh, and I've actually trapped this guy, uh, so he may end up becoming part of some kind of trading system, or perhaps even security system, because if I cure this guy and stick him out in front of the area here, any zombies that show up will tend to run to him instead of me. Uh, so I'll be able to sort of protect the area just a little bit and at least give myself an extra buffer before they start coming into my face. Uh, but anyway, um, then uh, basically what remains to be done here is um, I do want to cut this wall away a bit more um, and I was actually wondering how I was going to contour it then I realized that I was going to hit this cave. And this cave actually... Um, it's probably going to be about the right shape for what I had in mind, uh, which is nothing all too fancy, but just sort of a bit of an overhang sort of thing. Um, we'll see. I might cut this away a bit and might shape it creatively. We'll see. Uh, but I'm thinking you're going to stand somewhere right in here, and the main tower of mob system general mobbedness will be up somewhere around in there. Uh, it'll be great, uh, but for now I'm just going to cut away all of this and sort of merge everything together 
uh, and then I'll take a look at what I've got then. Alrighty, so got all that hollowed out, no problem whatsoever. Um, and this is cool because I've got a bit more space to work with, or at least you know some little tunnels and things around. Uh, and this this will I'll figure out something to do with this. That'll be neat, uh, and then I'll be able to um, sort of connect up through there as well potentially. Uh, Mr. Economist is investigating a weird portal over there. I don't know who made it, but. You know what is? Uh, we shall see. We shall find I, I imagine CDF made it, uh, but I guess it links back to spawn. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but so here's sort of what I was thinking for this system. Um, I'm gonna have the traditional skeleton spawner over there, uh, and then somewhere over here, sort of cutting through the side of the mountain and coming out, uh, sort of on the side there, like protruding out I think. I'm gonna try and make that work. I think it'd look cool. Um, I'll have sort of a cylindrical um, traditional mob system, you know. Think, you know, what Etho has, you know. Uh, but the one... a design similar to the one that's been done a billion times, uh, but I might try and put my own spin on it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but that'll be coming in from sort of the other side. This will sort of pipe around and come and they'll all they'll all they'll all come around into this central point here uh, where I will put an enchanting table uh, at eye level right here uh, and then obviously I'll have you know the book array uh, all around here it's something around like this and get it all the way up to level 30 maybe make it uh, maybe put in some pistons or whatever so that it's sort of toggleable and I'll be able to do different enchant levels and whatever. Uh, but then coming in from the top will be the pipe to um, uh, bring in the uh, monsters bit like that or so. Uh, and they'll come in, they'll fall down, they'll drop here. Everything, everything from both spawners uh, will, or the spawner and from the uh, mob system, everything will just sort of flow right into here, witches, skeletons, zombies, everything. Uh, and I'll be able to punch them, uh, because the, uh, um, blah, 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 the thing. Hi, Skype. Um, the, uh, enchanting table, enchanting table is not a full block, and so I'll be able to punch their legs from here, they won't be able to see me, of course, and they will get booped off, uh, moving the block here for demonstration purposes. Uh, they'll get booped off and fall down uh, another hole right back here. Uh, and obviously I wouldn't block the bookshelves like this. Uh, but, so that's the general idea and that way um, there would be sort of a, uh, there, there would be a really 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 long drop there. <laughs> Very long, probably like, you know, 30, 40 blocks or something just to be safe. Uh, for the heck of it, uh, to kill absolutely everything that falls down, including mobs with armor and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so everything will die, everything will die at that point, and it will be from fall damage, but, um, and it won't matter that they'll die at that point because I will have already booped them, and I, the fact that my fingerprints will be on their corpses uh, will indicate that I will get the credit. Uh, so I will get, you know, sort of an assist kill for booping them off what the game thinks is a cliff. Um, and so I will still get XP, and I will still get all kinds of things like that. Never mind the Skype messages. Um, I'll need to go offline, I think, if this keeps up. But, um, yeah, and I'm gonna try and set up a system for piping the XP back up here. Uh, I'm gonna fool around with some designs and see if I can make something work. Uh, and similar with the items, I'll have an item sorting system. Actually, maybe down there. Maybe that's what I'll put down there. I'll have a massive sorting system. Uh, that could be cool. But, um, uh, for now, that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, with Skype going crazy. Uh, I will, uh, leave this, maybe work a bit off camera, we shall see, um, and probably work a bit on connecting things up over there as well, uh, yeah.
Look forward to lots of cool stuff because cool stuff is definitely happening. See you guys next time.